This episode was made possible in part by the Van Ekren family, founders of Lando Frost, and the Hamill Family Foundation. That's me, Fred the house cat. When my family leaves for the day, I don't just sit inside watching the world go by. I become... Nature Cat! Backyard Explorer Extraordinaire! No worries. Has anyone seen Brooks yet, baby? Not yet, but our favorite Baltimore Oriole should be back from his migration any time now. I can't wait to see him after his long trip to Honduras and hear all about his winter south, away from all the snow, ice, and cold. Having a welcome back Brooks party was such a sweet idea, Hal. I've been planning it all winter, but now it's spring, and Brooks is coming back, and we are ready. <laughs> Hit it, Gary! Welcome back, Brooks. 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 And we got a Baltimore Oreo art book. Get your Baltimore Oreo art book that Hale made here. And the bird feeder with orange slices. <laughs> yes, we have everything we need. The music, the art book, the bird feeder. Yeah, we got everything we need except for Brooks. Where is he? Oh, wait. Where is my phone? I got Daisy's phone here. Who needs Daisy's phone? Oh, thanks. Huh. It looks like Baltimore Orioles were spotted yesterday in Chattanooga. And Brooks is always one of the first to fly north. I'll bet he was there. Oh, I do hear Chattanooga is lovely this time of year. And it's about a day south of us. Well, for a bird. I'm pretty sure Brooks should be here by now. Then we have to go find him. Like, totally have, 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 have to. Hey, greed! We shall split up and find our avian friend Brooks ASAP. Gary, rally music, please. Excuse me, have you seen this Oreo? He's yay big with a dazzling smile and a sweet nature. His name's Brooks. Not Brooks. Not Brooks. Go oh, Toronto Blue Jays! Definitely not Brooks. Back, back, back. Could it be Brooks? Ah! It's not. Oh, rats. Brooks? Nope, I'm Ozzy the Cardinal. I thought you were Brooks. <laughs> Boom! Water? Why did it have to be water? Towels! Who needs a towel? Where in the world is Brooks? It's Sadie. Oh, hey, Sadie. Yo, Daisy, you won't believe it. I was out here on the balcony, one out of nowhere. I heard a thumpity whack on the glass door. A thumpity whack? That's wacky. Crazy, right? Then I looked and saw Brooks the Oriole just lying there. Oh, no, he was on his way here. Oh, uh, is Brooks okay? I think so. Says he was in Honduras and wants oranges. Must have knocked his noggin real good. Hang tight, Sadie, we'll be right there. Don't worry, Brooks. Help from hell is on the way, buddy. To the city. Onward and Brooksward. <laughs> Brooks, it's me, Hal! Speak to me! Say something! Look what I made you! And I brought you an orange to give you an energy boost after your long trip! Ow! Mmm, yummy, yummy! Ow! Mmm, delicious! Ow! Thanks! Brooks, 
Honey, you okay? What happened? There I was, flying over the city, on my way to Nature Cat's yard when BAM! I flew right into this glass door. Oh, Brooks. He already flew into a window in season two. The No Birds Left Behind episode, remember? Brooks, why did it happen again? It all happened so fast. I, I didn't know it was a glass door, but the next thing I knew... Somebody whack! Yeah, I've heard this happening to other birds. I'm lucky I was just stunned. Hmm, me wonder if why this happens to so many birds. Well, you see, glass windows and doors reflect things in front of them, like the sky which looks like open space, or plants and trees, which look like a good place to land. So it's confusing. Can you continue your migration now, Brooks? I sure can. Go, oh, Brooks. It's your birthday. <laughs> oh, I know it isn't your birthday, but it sounded good saying that. This means, it means a welcome back Brooks party is back on! Yes, yes! Let us return to my yard at once, Tally. Whoa, 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 oh, not so fast. There are lots of other birds migrating north now, coming this way. I'm worried about them crashing into glass, too. Yikes! You can see reflections in the glass all over my neighborhood. Yeah, I've always wanted to fix this problem, but never knew how to. Not to worry, Brooks. Fly, Nature Cat! We'll make sure that the other birds won't hit glass and shall finish their migration safely! Uh-huh, traffic control. Birds approaching. Redirect all avians away from the building. Over. Copy that. Clearing feathery threat freeway for safe passage. Over. Oh, well, that didn't work. Beware of the scary spooky sky monster. The birds will be so terrified of this creature that they will fly far, far away from the windows. Or right into them. What? Man, oh man! None of our plans worked. Well, it's okay. You were just trying to help. Oh, if only you understood what it was like to be a bird. Oh, I'd love to pretend to be a bird. Too bad that's not possible. Who wants to pretend to be a bird here? Anyone want to pretend to be a bird? And I can help that. Houston! Ma'ams and sirs, I present the Avian Airbus 3000. Can you dig it? I say, oh, yeah! yeah! Go, Houston! It's your birthday! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know it's not your birthday. I just like saying that. Actually, it is my birthday. Happy birthday, Houston! Much appreciated. Let's get to work. The Avian Airbus 3000 is designed to help you see exactly what a bird does. Off you go. Woohoo! Oh, oh, yeah! This is gorgeous, just gorgeous. Uh, this is your captain, Nature Cat speaking. Like to say, that, uh, being a bird is easy. Gonna take us up to about uh, 10,000 feet elevation. It's smooth travels from here on out, gang. Nothing can stop us now. No! I've got to stop saying that. Over. What? What happened? What looked like more open sky and trees was really a glass window. It was just a reflection. Gang, what happened to Brooks also just happened to us. We gotta find a way to make it obvious that these are glass windows and doors and not what they are reflecting. And fast. So many birds will be passing through here. It's peak time for migrating. Oh, look. There's a smudge on the door. Here, this should help. That looks pretty, pretty good. Hmm. Our reflections look a lot different with all these stickers. It's too bad we can't cover all the other windows and doors with them. <gasps> That's it, Hal! You're a genius! Yes, I have been told that in many of these episodes. Oh, interesting. Adding stickers to the outside glass is a way to make them safe for birds. Remember to get your parents' permission here. Get your parents' permission. 
It says here you should space them about two inches apart. You can also close the curtains or move houseplants away from the glass windows and doors and decorate the glass with temporary paint. Say it's you call every dog, cat, guinea pig, and hamster in the neighborhood. See what they can do. On it, Squeaks! Calling all pets! And the rest of us will put stickers on all the glass around here. Onward, and save the bird's word. Get your parents' permission here. Don't forget to get your parents' permission. Be safe, birdies. It's working! They're not hitting the windows! This is amazing! We'll meet you guys at Nature Cats in the morning. You had a welcome home party for me. I'm so honored. Oh, we're so relieved he made it after such a dangerous journey. Thank my friends. They made the windows in the city safe for us. We changed windows around here, too. Look at the oh, He's in love, man. Oh, what a relief, because glass isn't only a problem in the city. Yes, yes. Now birds will be so much safer, both here and in the city. Gary. Party music, please. Welcome back, Brooks. Welcome back, Brooks. Welcome back, Brooks. Yeah! <laughs> Hurry, Nature Cat. It's time for our favorite fan, Dog Gone. <laughs> yeah! Yippee! Right. When the weather gets cold and the branches and twigs start to lose their leaves, and the birds can't dig. Cause the ground it's from so it's hard to find seeds, fruits, nuts, and worms. And in the winter, the birds can't search for birds. Let's make a bird feeder from an old milk jug. Some bird feeders stand on the ground, and others can hang from branches on down. There's a winter bird, there's a second and a third. Cause we made our bird feeders that we spread the word. There's a winter bird. A cracker a beak to pick through the shoulder what's underneath. A summer's half, a twist a beak to reach bugs in the ground or in a tree. Set up a bird feeder, haven't you heard? Soon you'll have a place with lots of birds. There's a winter bird, there's a second and a third, cause we made a bird feeders that we spread the word. There's a winter bird, there's a second and a third, cause we made a bird feeders that we spread the word. Pinecone Genie. Ah, Mystic Pinecone Park. This place just makes you want to slow down and enjoy nature. Where are they? Gotta find them. Where are those Mystic Pine Cones? Legend has it that if you find a Mystic Pine Cone, something magical will happen. Man, oh man, look! Is it a Mystic Pine Cone? No, it's all the amazing life in the stream. The fish, the beavers, these trees and shrubs. It's so magical. Okay, that was very magical. Now let's go find the Mystic Pine Cone. Ooh, it's gorgeous. Did you find the Mystic Pine Cone? Um, no. I found the most luxurious grass to lay in. Oh, it's magical. This grass is not magical. The pine cones are magical. But look at me, I can luxuriate while I watch those elk 
graze. What's more magical than that? Ooh, this is exactly how I dreamed it would be. <laughs> this is the Mystic Mind Gum. No, it's Songbird. <laughs> I always wanted to sing with songbirds under an aspen tree. Ah, oh, you done yet? I need to find the mystic pine cone. In a minute, Nature Cat. First try singing with these songbirds. It's magical. Okay, okay. I'll sing. <clears throat> me, 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 me. <gasps> The elk do not like your singing, sir. That wasn't me. That was the howl of some other animal. Hey, wait, I was howling. Maybe it was me that howled in the first place. Here I go, again howling on my own. Howling the only way I've ever known. Ooh, that's high, wink, wink, white snake. That one's for the parents. That's not you, Hal. It sounds like a wolf. Uh, wo -wo 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 wolf? Aren't they predators? As in they might want to eat us? Hey, everybody's got to eat. Am I right? It's true. We eat different things. Some of us eat plants. Some of us eat animals. Most of us can be eaten by something bigger than we are. Woo, not today, Fox. Okay, if the rabbit eats the grass and the fox eats the rabbit, what could eat the fox? Oh, the wolf! Yep, and that brings us to the top of the food web, the top predator. The animal that has no animal that hunts it. And I'm not interested in being today's lunch, so I'm out of here. Me too. See ya. We'd better go find that mystic pine cone before we meet a wolf ourselves. Hot word and cone word. Uh, on second thought, let's just get out of here. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, what kind of tree is this? <laughs> Ooh, it sparkles with sparkly sparkleness. Huh? Do you have any idea what you're holding? Of course. Maybe. I don't know. Nope. Definitely not. It's the Mystic Pine Cone! Ah, Nature calls! Wowie, Pine Zowie! It is good to be in the great outdoors again. Now tell me, who summoned the nature genie of the mystic pine cone? You're a genie? Yes, I am the nature genie, and I am here to grant you three nature wishes. Three wishes? Oh, boy! This will require careful thought and consideration. I wish for the perfect fetching stick. How? Oh, no! One fetching stick coming up. Nature Kazam! <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect fucking spark! Naturally. Now, what is your next nature wish? Well, we better hurry and make a wish before we run into a wolf. Say, what if our wish was about the wolves? Yeah, we can wish for fetching sticks for the wolves, too. Great idea, Nature Cat. No, uh, I was thinking that we could wish that there were no more wolves in Mystic Pinecone Park. If there were no wolves, we would be able to relax and enjoy the park more. Yeah, and I could lay in the grass without a worry in the world. And singing with those songbirds would be like, almost paradise. <laughs> wink, wink, Mike Reno and Ann Wilson. So, what's your wish going to be? We, we wish, wish there, there were no, no more wolves. wolves. You got it! <laughs> Nature Kazam! <laughs> wish has been granted. There are no wolves. Woohoo! Come on, let's go enjoy a worry free day in the park. Tally ho! Whoa! Why are there so many more elk here than there were before? Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that there are no more wolves? No, 
Don't be ridiculous, Hal. What do wolves have to do with elk? Well, wolves eat elk. It's true. If there are wolves around, we elk have to always be on the move to avoid them. But since the park has no wolves, we don't have to move anywhere. We can stay here and eat. And eat. And eat. Now I know why there's no more grass here to lounge in. Yes, that is unfortunate. But we can still go take pictures of all the amazing life that's in the stream. Come on! <laughs> Oh, what happened to the water? It's all cloudy. And where are all the fish? Maybe they're taking a fishy nap. Do fish take naps? What about the beavers? There were so many beavers here before. I'm sure there's a logical explanation. And there used to be a lot of shady trees here that kept everything cool. Now it's too hot. Yeah, too hot, baby. Wait, wait, cool again. Wait, what happened to all the trees? I'm sure it has nothing to do with the wolves. There are no wolves, remember? So elk can eat everything that grows here. <gasps> oh, baby tree. Mmm, yummy. Oh, mm. well, if the elk keep eating all these saplings, then no new trees can grow. Unhand that mm. sapling. Mm. Put mm. the sapling mm. down. That's why there's no shade. And look how much the stream has changed. It doesn't look as healthy for the fish and other animals. So no wolves is connected to more elk, which is connected to a lot of the plants by the stream disappearing? Oh, this is bad. We uh, just need to get our minds off it, Hal, old pal. Let's sing with the songbirds in the trees. Yes, yes, come on, birds in the trees. Let's sing. <laughs> The birds in the trees aren't singing. Why aren't they singing? Because there are no trees, Hal. Remember? And without the trees, there's no birds. Don't you see? It's all connected, man. Nature Cat, I think our magic wish took all the magic out of nature. No, it didn't. Uh, oh, who am I kidding? Yes, it did. We ruined Mystic Pine Goat Park. What, what are, are we going, going to do? do? Oh, wait a minute. The genie said we had three wishes, right? Right, and we only used two wishes. Come on, we gotta find that pine cone and ask that genie for our last wish. Tally-ho. <laughs> oh no, the mystic pine tree fell. And all the mystic pine cones are gone. Oh, it's sad, so sad. Such a sad, sad situation. Wink, wink, Sir Elton John. Oh, no. Now we'll never be able to make our third wish. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Was just out for a little pine cone ride. <gasps> Whoa! What in the name of everything piney happened here? I, uh, think it might have had something to do with our wish. You wished for no wolves. What does that have to do with my pine tree? We found out that taking away one kind of animal from its home can affect everything. No! Yes, sir. And since there are no wolves, now there's lots more elk here, sir. And the elk keep eating away most of the plants. And when there are fewer plants, the singing, singing songbirds lose their shelter. It even changed the stream including my pine tree. Oh, well, guess my pine tree fell down when the stream banks crumbled. Wait, Nature Genie, we still have one more wish. <laughs> oh, that's right, you do. Any idea what you want? Okie dokie, what is your wish? We, we wish, wish for, for the wolves, wolves to come, come back, back to the Mystic Pine Cone park. park. I like that wish. <laughs> Nature Kazan! <laughs> Your wish is granted. The Mystic Pine Tree, it's back! Well, if the Pine Tree is back, maybe the rest of Mystic Pine Tree Park is back, too. Let's go see. Onward and parkward. So long. The grass is back. Oh, happy day. And so are the trees. And so are the songbirds. So is the stream and all the animals. I hear you, old 
Now we know how important you really are. The more you know. I guess wolves are a part of what makes nature so magical. Find more of your PBS Kids friends on your local PBS station and the free PBS Kids video app. Also subscribe to the PBS Kids Prime video channel.